Well, good morning, everybody. This is Bob Elson, and we're set as usual with our Sunday morning show. And we're back now to our home base on Irving Park. The last few weeks we've been doing our show at our new location at 72 East Randolph, which has turned out to be a great, great new location for Northwest Federal. Anyway, the we've had nice weather this weekend. It's been fairly pleasant. We hope you've had a good time. And uh, our guest today was here about a year ago. Uh, he's been here a number of times. His name is Bill Kirvin, who is the executive director of the 10th Annual Camping and Travel Exposition. It gets underway, by the way, in Chicago up north next Friday. But we have a lot of things to talk about with Bill. Well, it was just a week ago that Super Bowl weekend was on. I'm happy I had the right team, Dallas. And uh, Dallas really gave Denver a real lesson. Uh, you know, they talked so much about the Denver defense before that game got underway. And Dallas showed them uh, something that they call the flex defense. And Denver was busy all day trying to figure out what they were doing. But they saw Dallas's defensive line in their backfield all day. And I really felt sorry for their quarterback, Morton, who never really had a chance. He was victimized by four or five interceptions, but only because... Uh, he had White and Martin and Pew and the rest of those guys on his back all the time. But Dallas is perhaps the best disciplined team in pro football. They have one of the two greatest coaches in pro football. And I, in my opinion, the two best coaches are Landry and Shula with Miami. And I get that not from my own opinion, but from the number of professional football players I talk to. And those names come up all the time. Landry and Shula. Speaking of coaches, I was sorry to see Jack Pardee leave. He's been a guest out here a number of times at Northwest Federal. He's a wonderful guy and a good football coach. I feel sure that he's headed for Washington, and we want to wish him a lot of luck. Uh, perhaps you saw in Sports Illustrated, if you read it, it happens to be my favorite magazine, a wonderful story on Super Bowl with some fantastic pictures. Uh... It happens to tie in with the fact that uh, this past week, Sports Illustrated was host here in Chicago uh, in the assembly hall of the Prudential Building to one of the nicest parties of the year. It was really just a wonderful affair that they gave for the media, uh, the advertising people, potential customers. Uh, there are many, many friends in the world of sport, and it was just a tremendous, tremendous affair. In fact, this is early in 78, but that's got to be the party of the year, and it's going to be an awful tough party to top. They had it in the uh, assembly hall, and there's a stage in the assembly hall, and they had a very nice show, and they had a little band, and they had four or five people putting on uh, an act. And the show was very interesting. The food was great. The drinks were great. And all in all, they were um, just a marvelous host. And it was put on by Sports Illustrated, there are people in New York, and also I'd like to congratulate Tom Hickey and his great staff here with Sports Illustrated in Chicago. His staff acted as host for the people, and they're lovely, gracious people, and all in all, it was one of the great parties of the year. But if you're not a regular reader of Sports Illustrated and you're a sports fan, take my word for it, you're missing something. Say, is your bank open when you're busy and closed when you're not? Well, Northwest Federal Savings knows that a good place to save is ready for you whenever you're ready. So Northwest Federal's open 63 hours a week. You've heard that slogan. If you work evenings, you can come to Northwest Federal six full days. Northwest Federal's open Monday, Thursday, and Friday evening. And if the only time you can get to Northwest Federal is, say, 8 o'clock in the morning, that's okay, too, because Northwest Federal has early bird service every morning from 8 o'clock on you'll find six convenient Northwest Federal Savings Centers throughout Chicagoland, including our great new location in the Loop at 72 East Randolph. Come in to Northwest Federal Savings on your way to, from, or between work, shopping, or home anytime because Northwest Federal Savings keeps the best hours yours. Our guest today, we're happy to see Bill again, is Bill Kirvin, who is the executive director and show manager 
for the annual Camping and Travel Exposition. This is the 10th annual, by the way, and it gets underway next week on Friday. Bill, as you look back over a span of 10 years that you've been the top banana at this uh, particular affair, what have been some of the really notable changes? What, what will the camping and travel enthusiasts see when they visit your great show starting next Friday that wasn't there 10 years ago. What are some of the radical differences? Well, you've got that new 35-foot park model that has a double tip-out bedroom, which is completely new. It's the, this is going to be the first year it's ever been shown. The units have gotten larger, yet at the same time they have gotten lighter in weight. The equipment that is being put in these units today in the travel trailers, motorhomes, and everything has improved so darn much. 10 to 15 years ago, they were rather primitive, even though they were self-contained. But today, why they've got every darn thing in them. If you want an ice maker, we can find one that'll fit in the unit for you. Now, who would heck in a fold-down would want one, but it, you can have it. They've now found a way of putting an air conditioner in a fold-down camping trailer. The changes that have been made are just absolutely unbelievable. What are we talking about when you talk about that type of travel today? Are we talking about a big investment? Are we talking about a lot of money? Or can a person do it, a couple say that they're retired? Can they do it economically and live that way? Well, once they have the initial investment in equipment, the living costs are much, much lower than living in a home. Uh, you can travel around the country. You can find uh, state parks where you can camp for two, two and a half, three dollars a night. You can uh, live much cheaper in some of the other parts of the country than you can in the metropolitan area that you're used to living in because food prices are lower. There's no heating costs. You're moving around getting into the climate that you like. If, in the summertime, where you can go into the mountains or into the north, in the wintertime, you can head down there where it's south, uh, nice and warm in the south. And again, it's much more economical than living in a home. Well, let's say that you have a car and so you have a trailer. That The difference between that and a motor home that you call it is what? Well, your motor home is a self-propelled unit. It's like a small bus and it has everything built into it. And they range in price from around uh, $10,000 up to almost $100,000, depending upon how large and how deluxe you want it. But you have other equipment that starts off around $1,600, the fold-down camping trailers, that, and they run up to around $4,000. Again, you're able to find anything you want in that size. Then, of course, you have your travel trailers in between. So there's really something for everyone in the camping and travel way. Well, let's say somebody wants to invest in that, and they've retired, and they want to get a trailer and hook it onto a car, and they just want to go and see the country. What about the availability of places to park a trailer and what about the cost in different states? Well, your the, uh, units, your availability of campgrounds are very, very, they're, they're intense. The, 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 for example, in your Chicago area, you have 23,000 campsites within 100 miles of Chicago. If you haven't been out camping, you wouldn't know that. But there are around 23,000. Yes, sir. Uh, and every year they're building more and more sites. And as you move across the country, you'll find that in all the areas of the United States, there are private campsites, public campsites, state forests, national forests, and all these places have camping facilities. So there's no concern in that area? No, and as far as cost, it can range anything from uh, two and a half, three dollars a night at a state park or state campground up to sixteen, eighteen dollars a night at the uh, places like the, by your theme park, such as uh, Disney World, or something like that. Uh, there's, uh, it depends on what you want, too. If you want golfing and horseback riding, you can find it at a campsite. If you want uh, primitive camping, you can also find that. So the range depends on what you want to do. In the publicity that they've sent out on your show, there's a lot of talk and a lot of things written about RVs, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, they and are what? An RV is a generic term referring to all the types of vehicles that are used for camping. Tra travel trailers, fold-down campers, fifth wheels, motorhomes, mini motorhomes, and van conversions. So an RV means every one of those. Recreational vehicle. Right, a recreational vehicle. Now, besides things like this, places to live in, motorhomes and uh, trailers that we're talking about, what other things will people see at the show? Well, we have a very nice display of campground operators. The private owners of the various campgrounds in the uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Indiana areas are coming down and they're setting up booths and they're going to tell people about what they can find in the various parts of the country as far as camping. Then the Indiana Campground Association, Wisconsin and Illinois Campground Associations, they're going to have booths there and they're going to be able to talk about the entire state as far as camping facilities are concerned. Then we have a number of booths in there of people who service and 
modif- modify the game. RVs, uh, people who fix it if you break it, people who will install new things if you want to update it. Uh, we've got uh, quite, a, quite a range of things. We've even got packs, uh, backpacking in there, in case you happen to want to take a little trip back in the woods after you're to your campsite. We've got hiking boots. We've got uh, uh, tents there. We've all kinds of things. And, of course, these dealers can't bring everything in that they've got to show you as far as boots and stuff, but they do sell them, and, and they're there they're to talk to you about it. They want to give you information. What about your own experiences in travel and camping out? What are some of the places? Now, for example, if you ask me where I'd like to go to now when the summertime comes along with a, a, for an experience like that and spend a week or ten days, I'd pick Colorado. I mean, that's a really a fantastically beautiful state and a very, very... The climate is just marvelous there. It is a marvelous state, and I'm especially fond of uh, Mesa Verde uh, National Park. Oh, that is a beautiful place to go. You know where the Broadmoor is located there in Colorado Springs? Yes, I do. Well, that's a, that's a beautiful area. And you know the fishing in Colorado is fantastic. Oh, someday I'm going to have to tell you, Bob, about one of my fishing tri- trips up there where I really blew it. I left my cotton pick and reels at home. It was that horrible getting out there. I'll have to tell you the whole story sometime. Uh... My other favorite spot, especially at this time of the year, is Padre Island, down just off the coast of Texas. It's a marvelous time to go, place to go at this time of the year, especially if you're as tired of this cotton-picking winter as I am. <laughs> what do you call it, Padre Island? Padre Island. Yeah. And it's a, a little island off the coast of Texas, about 100 miles long, and it varies in width from about a half a mile to about, oh, four or five miles in width. But the weather is beautiful. The sands are white and the water is warm, and it doesn't have any snow. I think we've had just about our fill of it. You know, we've had it all practically jammed in here at one time, and and now this weekend we're getting fairly pleasant weather, and let's hope we have a continuation of it. Yeah. You know, we don't get it as bad as they do in South Bend or Buffalo or New York. They're paralyzed there. You know why we don't? No, I don't. Well, if you took a look at the map, Chicago's in like a cove here, like in the corner, and a lot of that snow misses us. Where they hit South Bend, and they paralyze Buffalo, we were going to Buffalo a couple of weeks ago on business. We get out to the airport, and we're looking, uh, had our tickets already, and they say, go to, go to window two. We went to window two, and they said there's uh, 16 inches of snow and a 45-mile wind in Buffalo, and there won't be any planes going to Buffalo for a week. Well, we don't have that in Chicago, and look at New York, what they had yesterday. We're paralyzed. Oh, I'm darn glad I'm not out there. I just really don't go this route. I like that nice, warm climate where you can get out and do things. That's why I'm looking forward to spring. There's so darn many things I need to do right now, and none of them are work. They're all going to be play. The camping and travel show will be on for how long, period? It's on for 10 days. It opens up on January the 27th through February the 5th. And the hours are from 3 p.m. in the afternoon till 10 p.m. on weekdays. Weekends were open from 12 noon until 10 p.m. How expensive is it? On weekdays for adults, it's $1.75. On weekends, it's two and a half dollars. So the time to come has come during the week when we've got our discount days going. What is it for children? Children under six are free on weekends. On weekdays, children under 12 are free. Uh, on weekends, children between the ages of six and 12 are one dollar. That isn't too bad. No, no, we're it's not a money making thing. We just This is our thing. They can stay as long as they want. Absolutely. Thank you, Bill. We'll be back here with our guest, Bill Kirvin, who is the executive director and show manager of the Camping and Travel Show. And remember, it gets underway next week on Friday. Shows The sports writers of Chicago are having their annual bash tonight at the Sheraton Chicago. And it's always a very, very nice affair. Uh... A number of players, a number of personalities are going to be honored. Bill Veck will be honored. My good friend Jack Brickhouse is going to be honored, and he deserves it. He's done a great job with the Cubs for many, many years. Uh, Royal, a great uh, pitcher with the Cubs, will be honored. Gamble will be back. Uh, he'll be honored. But it's going to be a great affair, and if you'd like to go, it's at the Sheraton Chicago, and it's tonight starting at 7 o'clock, and you can get tickets right at the door. So... If you've never attended one of these affairs, make it a point to. It'll be uh, really a very, very pleasant evening. Our guest today is Bill Kirvin, who, as we told you, is the manager of the Camping and Travel Show. Bill, when you stop and think about a show like yours, does a show provide the motivation, or what provides the motivation for families who want to be campers or things? What what brings it about? Well, I think really it comes down to one thing. When the uh, family starts realizing that they need to be closer together, Right now, today, in every family, mom belongs to PTA, the daughter, she, she's running off to be with one of her girlfriends, the boy is in Boy Scouts, 
and all year long they're running in different directions and we're losing this family cohesiveness that's so important to our way of life. And people have found that camping is the answer. You get out there, there's no telephone, there's no distractions. You get a chance to show that kid what your dad showed you. Uh, the little girl all of a sudden is learning some of the things that the boys can do, and the boys are learning what little girls can do. They're helping with the cooking. All of a sudden, the boy finds out that Dad can cook breakfast, and he cooks a darn good breakfast. It uh, gives them a chance to go back into the woods and in the mountains and see things. And when you're doing these things with your children, you're developing a rapport. They're starting to relate to you. And all of a sudden, you're not a, a figure way up in the air, but you're part of that. You become It brings the family together. And this is the most important thing that we need to do in this country is keep our families in a good, tight situation, and it works with camping. Well, now, it sounds like a really wonderful philosophy. How do you sell this to the people who attend the show? Well, we don't really try to sell them on this idea. We prefer that their friends sell them on it. If, you're, if you think you'd like camping, talk to your friends who are campers. Maybe they'll even invite you to go out on a camping trip. Find out for yourself. Don't believe that I, because I say camping is good doesn't really mean it is. Not maybe not for you, but try it with your friends. There's many, many of your friends who have camping equipment, and there's no problem to take you as long as a guest. If you can't find someone who will invite you, rent some camping equipment and go out and give it a try and find out what it's really like. Everybody that I know that has tried camping likes it. Sometimes they can't continue with it because, you know, there's something that happen in the family. A kid will get sick or something like that, but camping is fun. Bill, what are, what are a few of the things that motivate, uh, let's say, an elderly couple who... Their children have grown up, they're all by themselves, uh, that motivate them to want to have a trailer type of life. Uh, what, what are some of the factors? Well, e e economics was one of the big factors, but the most important, again, is you've worked you're all your life. You've worked hard you've, so that you could live the good life. So you're getting yourself a travel trailer or a motor home, and you go out and start seeing this country. We've got a marvelous country, and there's things to be seen. In the process, you're able to drop in and visit your old friends that you haven't seen in many years. You might have been in service with one of the guys. You can go visit him. You're not going to be a burden on him in his home because you've got your own home with you. Then you drop off to see your children and your grandchildren. And again, they might be living in a little old two-bedroom home, and you would be a heck of a burden if you dropped in on them. But if you've got your own camping trailer, your own motor home, whatever the case might be, you, you can go to a campground nearby and really visit them without being a burden on them financially or in space. Uh, it's uh, it's just a good way to go. And you don't have to get up in the morning. You know, those kids getting up to go, go to school at 7 o'clock in the morning, you might want to sleep late. If you're staying with the, your grandchildren, hey, you're going to wake up too. If you're out in the campsite, you can sleep as long as you want and then go visit the kids after the children in school. I found that out. I was visiting my four grandchildren out in Arizona over the Thanksgiving holidays, and, boy, they were getting me up at 6.30 in the morning. Isn't that? Oh. Yes, isn't that, that's not the time to get up when you're supposed to be enjoying yourself. And... This is one of the things that we have out there at Arlington Park is the chance for people to come out and talk to the campground operators and talk to the various people who have these units out there and examine them. And if you happen to find something you like out there, you buy the darn thing right there. I'm wondering why you picked that particular area for your show every year. Well, it's much easier for people to move out of, uh, drive out of Chicago than drive into Chicago because as you drive into Chicago, you get into a traffic congestion and parking problems. As you move out into Arlington Park Exposition Center, we have miles and miles of parking out there. There's we're parking for thousands of cars. Uh -huh. uh, really, for no other reason except it's a very nice facility. Well, and it's, as you say, it's so convenient. It's just, uh, what, about 20, 20 minutes from where we are right now, isn't it? Actually, it took me just a little tiny bit more than that, but the traffic was a little tight today. Uh, you'd go out the Northwest Expressway to Highway 53, go north on 53 to Euclid, and you're right there at the park at the Exposition Center. Were you around when they were talking about building a stadium for the Bears out there? Yes, I was, and I was I was hoping they would because we could just use another facility and a larger facility than the one we have. What do you, what's your feeling on a new stadium? We're going to have some people on the show here in the next couple of months. Uh, Larry Kane, who runs the International Amphitheater. Uh, Ed Kelly, who's the superintendent of the Park District. He's involved. Pat O'Malley's involved. I want to get some opinions on the pros and cons of a new stadium. Uh, why shouldn't Chicago, the greatest city in America, have one? Must be some way. All these other cities have the same problems, uh, economic problems that we have here. 
Uh, the people don't want to pay for it, but they all put up these uh, stadiums. Why can't Chicago? There's no reason Chicago can't. Uh, and we have some beautiful areas around here. And the, the Chicago people are sports oriented. You, everybody, I shouldn't say everyone, but the, the Chicago people really support sports, and there really should be a sports complex in this area, a good one. One of the problems that we have here in Chicago in planning a sports complex is the two baseball teams have their own parks. The Cubs have Wrigley Field, and the White Sox have Comiskey Park. Now, they want to play in a park on their own property. They get the parking fees, and they get concessions and everything else. If they build a giant stadium here, uh, the Blackhawks wouldn't go. They have their own building, which is an excellent building. On uh, that, that whole area out there, Arthur Wirtz has spent a fortune out there building up and lighting up that whole area, and there's all kinds of parking places. So there are three that wouldn't be interested in going into a new stadium, and it uh, just about leaves the Bears. Yes, but there's other things you can use one of these facilities for. In other states, they, they use them for putting on expositions. Now, the McCormick Place is already becoming overbooked. It's difficult to get booking into McCormick Place. So actually, I think we need a second exposition center, and the two could be combined, and it would serve a, a dual purpose. Uh -huh. Well, that's true. There, there must be some other way to raise revenue. Well, the one down in Dallas, make it, they make an awful lot of money putting on various expo expositions, uh, like the flower show here at McCormick Place. Well, as I said before, McCormick Place is booked in. You really can't get room to put a show in there. So we do need either a, another facility is what we really need. And there, then we could bring more conventions and more. we'd have more tourism in the uh, city. We'd have more money coming in. So I think it should be studied very, very carefully from the economic end, and I think they might find that there's, it would bring money into the city. Well, the mayor selected a fine committee headed by former Governor, Governor Ogilvy. And they're going to take a whole year to figure the pros and cons on this. Soldier Field has been a good facility, but it's uh, it's falling apart now. You know, it's been there a long time. The weather has taken its toll out there. And it really just uh, it doesn't compete anymore with the kind of buildings that they have in other cities. That's very, very true. And it's limited as far as uh, additional use is concerned because it's not an all-year-round facility. There's no way you could put something in out there right now unless you wanted to start shoveling the snow away and issue snowsuits to people coming in. You spend the, the uh, major part of the year around Chicago? Yes, sir, I do. I uh, work on the shows, and I have uh, a very deep interest in camping in this area, so I'm constantly involved in the camp with the camping group here in Chicago. And I keep watching the legislative action down in Springfield to make sure that there's nothing being done in Springfield that would be detrimental to the camping people. Not not the businesses, but the people who go camping. Now, the people are wondering what you mean by that. Well, it's it, you can raise the prices on your uh, camp fees in your state parks, and that would be bad. You can have a state park starting to deteriorate. That's bad. They, someone might want to improve or obtain a new state park, and unless someone's down there watching it and passing the word around to the various campers that these things are happening, you can't get any, uh, any reaction from your legislature. So what we do, and when we see something that isn't going the way we think it should be, we call the National Campers Hikers up on the telephone, their national headquarters, and tell them, hey, we need some help down here. Let's get these senators to push improving this park. And I, I like camping, and I guess I just try to get involved in every end of it. Well, that's an angle of it I never thought of. It's a very interesting thing, too, because uh, there are things that can be done to improve camping in the state of Illinois. Illinois does not have the best campgrounds. They do need a lot of improvement. Our guest today is Bill Curvin, who is the manager of the Camping and Travel Exposition or Show, and it starts on Friday out in Arlington Heights, a very convenient place to get to, so make it a point to get over there and to enjoy it for sure. Say, is your bank open when you're busy and closed when you're not? Well, Northwest Federal Savings knows that a good place to save is ready for you whenever you're ready, and ready to offer savers the kind of services that you can get with a Northwest card. Now, this is a special feature available to savers who maintain a $500 balance. Here's what you get. Traveler's checks, special occasion checks, registered checks, all with no service charge. Need document photocopies or lamination? It's free with the Northwest card. There's a special quick check cashing ID card with your picture. And even special vacations for Northwest card members. So get a world of the services you need often by getting a Northwest card at any of six convenient Northwest Federal Savings Centers throughout Chicagoland, including our great new downtown location at 72 East Randolph. Our slogan there is the advent of Northwest Federal into the loop means the end of loop banker's hours. No more of that 9 to 3 routine. 
Our companies open practically all day long to be of service to our customers. So be a special person at Northwest Federal anytime, because Northwest Federal saving keeps the best hours yours. Incidentally, next week we have we will have here in the lobby of Northwest Federal one of the greatest hockey players that ever lived, Bobby Orr of the Blackhawks. So if you're a hockey fan or if you've got a youngster that's a hockey fan that plays hockey, have him get over here next Saturday morning and meet the great Bobby Orr. As you know now, he's an assistant coach. It's sad that he can't play anymore. You know, Bill, that's really a tragedy. This guy uh, was really knocked over right at the height of his career. That is a shame, you know. Really, it is. At his age, that he just can't play anymore. But anyway, he's going to be a big help uh, out there with the Blackhawks as a coach because he knows the game inside and out. And I'm really looking forward to talking with him. Well, it's fine that he's going to be able to stay involved in the sports. It's, it really is. I hope your show is a big success. Tell us again. Where is it at? When does it get underway? And for how long? It's out at the Arlington Park Exposition Center in Arlington Heights, Illinois. It opens on January the 27th and closes on February the 5th. The hours on weekdays are from 3 till 10 p.m., weekends from 12 noon until 10 p.m., except the final Sunday, and we're going to close up at 8 o'clock and see if we can't finally get a supper. Uh -huh. Well, and the cost is? On weekdays for adults, it's $1.75. On weekends, adults are two fifty. On weekends, children between the ages of 6 and 12 are 1 buck. Other than that, children are free. You should get a tremendous crowd. We always do. We have people come out there and have a lot of fun. We've even got free prizes for the little tiny kids. And we're going to have a magician out there to help entertain them. Mr. Magic's going to be with us. I should be out there with a deck of cards. I'll show you some magic. We'd like to have you come out, by God. We'll give you a spot on stage. You know that. Thanks, Bill. We'll look forward to seeing you again next year. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. We've been talking with Bill Curvin, the manager of the Camping and Travel Show. It opens next Friday in Des Plaines. And it's a great show, and it should be of interest to everyone. If you're a camper, it'll certainly interest you. If you're not a camper, but you could become a camper, because it's interesting and it's exciting, I know that you'll enjoy the show. Remember tonight, the annual Sports Writers Dinner. That is uh, is going to be held. And uh, try, if you can, to get by and enjoy it. A lot of prominent guests will be there and some very good speakers, and it's a great affair. You know, it won't be long. Here we are along past the middle of January. And pretty soon, the Cubs will be playing at Wrigley Field. I met Kingman the other day, an awfully nice guy. And uh, he should be a big help with a lot of people in the park. And Bonds, who is a new member of the White Sox, was here also last week. Also a very able and a great ball player. He's going to help the White Sox. We should have a really outstanding baseball season. Well, have a pleasant day. And remember, next Saturday, try to get over when we record our show for Sunday, listening, when Bobby Orr is going to be our guest, one of the all-time great hockey players.